Okay, welcome. We're going to be using the using the graphics to solve quadratic equations today, and I'm using this model of the Casio, which is pretty similar to the older mod older model. Uh, first of all, let's get it fired up here. Turn it on. Uh, exit, and we should see the menu screen. So the menu screen looks like this, and the category that we're going to use there is the equations one. Okay. Uh, before we do any of that, though, so before we do any of that, quadratics, in order to solve quadratics, they must be in this form no matter what. If we want to factorize them, use quadratic formula, uh, use the calculator, uh, they've got to be set to zero, and they've got to be in descending powers of x. So x squared comes first, and then the x term, and then the constant term, the term with no x. So, uh, first example, I'll, I'll say uh, solve for x, as it usually says, and I say I have 5x squared minus 3x equals 7. And, of course, we don't do anything with that yet because it's not in the uh, solving form, even if I wanted to use quadratic formula. I set it equal to 0 by minusing, subtracting that 7 to the other side. And I'm ready to plug in A, B, and C, which I have already. So I've got A equals 5 right here, and B equals negative 3, and C equals negative 7. So after that, I'm heading to the equation part, and move this up a bit. And I get into equations and I press execute. And out of those three uh, quadratics are always going to be polynomial. F2 because this this is a this is a polynomial. Uh, the degree is the highest order of the exponent, so the degree is two. So I press F1 for two. And now I'm going to delete this because that's another problem there. And I'm just going to uh, plug in A, B, and C. A is 5, so I press 5, execute, and then negative 3, execute, and negative 7, execute. After that last execute, press it again, and I get my roots. Okay, so I get x is, I get two values for x as I should. And by the looks of it, it looks like those two roots um, are going to be irrational, I'm, I'm guessing, that they are two irrational roots. I mean, they're, two, they're still real, they're still going to cross the x-axis, but they're not going to cross it at a rational number. Okay, so let's look at another one. Okay, so suppose I have this one. Uh, it doesn't look like I have a, a constant term there. So uh, the a coefficient is negative 2. Uh, the b coefficient, there's an imaginary 1 right there. And the C coefficient, that's not the C term. Uh, there is no constant term, so C is 0. So now I'd go back to my screen, press exit again, and just, and just enter these three numbers in for A, B, and C. A gives me negative 2, execute. B is 1, execute. And C is 0. And after that, after I have all those in correctly, I think that's right, Press the execute button again, and I get two nice looking roots of um, half and zero. Okay. So of course these two roots are not irrational. Those are those can be expressed as fractions. Uh, so here we've got two rational roots, which of course are real as well. Two rational roots. Okay. So your calculator won't tell you if it's rational or irrational. But it will tell you if they're real or not, or if they're not real, I should say. So in this last example, um, let's see, this last example, your calculator is going to tell you something. If I have uh, 3x squared equals negative 6, and if you're good at solving quadratics right now, you may already see something. Uh, so we still follow the same rule. Set it equal to 0. That's 3x squared plus 6 equals 0. A is 
3. There is no B term. There is no B term. So B is, in fact, 0. And C is 6. OK. And we stick to the program. Entering those in. Exit there. Um, plug in 3, 0, and 6. So I've got 3, execute, 0, execute, 6, execute. And that's what my calculator will tell me. It says, hey, you won't get a value of x because they're not real numbers. They're imaginary numbers. So sorry, we're, we, we can't display that just yet. So since it's, since it's no real roots, we're going to say x doesn't equal any real number. x has no real roots. OK? Now, by, by saying that, by saying that x has no real roots, that's much better than saying x has no solution, because it does have a solution. It's just not a real number solution. So um, when, when we get this on the graphics, and it says this, we can put no real roots, or we can put, um, we can put it has we can ha two imaginary roots, two imaginary roots. Let's be positive. Let's not be negative and say x has no real roots. Let's say it does have roots. They're just imaginary numbers, which we could solve with the quadratic formula. We could use a quadratic formula and get some complex numbers for the solution. OK, so I think those are pretty much the different cases that we're going to have using, using the graphics. We're going to have two irrational roots, two rational roots. We could have one answer, but I didn't give any examples. Or it'll tell you, hey, we can't have any real number answers for that one. Okay? That's it. That's it for me.